Welcome back to Between the Lines, fueled by Gatorade. The Vikings, Vic, Torius, and Border Battle number 121 against the Green Bay Packers. Final score, 28 to 22. And boy, oh boy, Dalvin Cook, 226 total yards today. Led the team in both rushing and passing for, for touchdowns. What couldn't he do today, Ben? He, he just brings a smile to my face and hopefully everybody at home as well watching the game. Um, you know, he's just so lightning quick with those cutback runs. I mean, that's that's what makes him go. And that's when this offensive line is really good. When they can get a hat on a hat and you've got the speed of which Dalvin Cook runs getting to the line of scrimmage, they don't have to block very long. All those combo blocks can be super quick up to the second level, and you can see the way he can make people miss. He kind of slithers through the line, and guys just don't tackle him one-on-one. -on -one. Even when he takes a clean hit like he did at the end of the game, he does a fantastic job of just absorbing those hits, letting his feet come off the ground, then puts his feet back on the ground and picks up two or three more yards. The guy is a super special. And you know, Gabe, defensively, the way the defensive line played, first game without Unique Ngakwe, uh, they kept contain on A-Raj as well as I've seen in a while. They were really good against the run, either Jaleel Johnson, either the Sunday night game at Dallas last year or today, absolutely his best game. DJ Wanham coming together beautifully now with two sacks. And then, you know, due to injury with, with Cam Dantzler and then Mark Fields and then Chris Boyd, you got two corners at the end of the game. Anthony Harris had to play nickel. Rookie Josh Metellus comes in to be a safety man. So good job, Vikings. Good job, Zimmer. Good, good job, job, Dalvin. Between the lines, field by Gatorade Ben. This run defense, Jalil Johnson, Shamar Stephan, they buckled down in the second half. We can talk about the defense all second half, what they did. Eric Kendrick's 11 tackles, uh, one pass breakup. But just speaking of that run defense, Shamar Stephan, Jalil Johnson, they held this Green Bay Packers run game to 28 total rushing yards in the second half. What stood out to you about those guys? Well, I think they just played fast. You know, I think uh, they started off a little slow in the first and second series. Uh, we weren't doing a great job on first down, and they run the ball pretty well. But then all of a sudden, they changed gears a little bit. We stepped up. We just seemed like we, we got better as the game went on. We understood the physicality at which they were going to play with. We matched that physicality. Uh, I tell you what, you know, watching Afadi in the run game is is a treat. You know, he does such a good job with his hat in the hands, getting those long arms and separation, getting off and trying to make make some plays. They ran for 158 yards in the first game here at this place, and they ran for just over 100 yards on us today, and that was a big difference. You know, all those little yards, uh, all those all those little wins on first and second yeah, down, they, they add up. They add up for sure. Four touchdowns on the first four possessions for the Minnesota Vikings. PA. Kirk Cousins, a lot of people aren't talking about him. 11 for 14, 160 passing yards. He did what he had to do. Yeah, it was perfectly stated, Gabe, because his passes were on time. He generally was leading receivers when he needed to pass. Uh, came up with a really nice shifty play action early to Rudolph left. They got 12. Uh, Kubiak Cousins, the Minnesota Moving Company, I mean, Ben talked about it. Ezra Cleveland, the rookie at right guard, playing his second start. You know, we haven't watched it back, but the Minnesota Moving Company provided not only a way for Dalvin to do his thing, protected Kirk well enough, and, um, you know, even back to the defensive line of what Ben was saying, Armin Watts. I mean, you know, young Armin's played like 16 games. Second year from Arkansas, he with 96 was all over the place. So hopefully things are getting better. Uh, it's only two wins, but if you're going to find number two, find it against those guys. EK, we we're talking about a defensive side of the ball. You play a linebacker. What's your thoughts on this linebacker group? Uh, Troy Dye came back today. It was good to see him back. <laughs> yeah. You know, just like all the other injuries in the, on this defense, guys have had to step up. And and you talked about Kendricks. He was all over the place. And and he's one of those guys that you can trust in, in the pass game as well. He had that nice pass breakup on the on the deep cover two, middle of the read field, middle of the field read, excuse me, against Devontae Adams. It just it just shows you his versatility. And, and they trust a guy like that to be in those situations, a third safety to run down the middle of the field and make some plays. So the guy pretty much does it all. And, uh, you know, he's, he's always right there for all the kind of the rock back plays you know they try to cut back on us at times but he's so disciplined can beat off uh these these blockers up front and get to the tackle lastly i get both of you guys' final thoughts pa we'll start with you uh, well, um, you know, my final thoughts are uh, there's absolutely no doubt with Detroit coming to town next game, you got Everson Griffin and Adrian Peterson, uh, a couple of former Vikings, so you're going to have to find a way to whack that team and uh, maybe get two consecutive victories. That would be a stroke of genius and uh, see where it goes from there. 
That is very true. Next game up for the Detroit Lions next Sunday right here at U.S. Bank Stadium. Before we get there, this upcoming Tuesday, November 3rd is Election Day. So, guys, make sure you go out there and vote. For Nacho, for PA, I'm Gabe Henderson. This is Between the Lines, fueled by Gatorade.